What about you? Today we're going to talk about the little things with this little one thing. If you do this trick, it can make all the difference to you for your lawn through the winter and make sure that you have a really good lawn coming in the spring. Let's go. Now the lawn hasn't been cut in a couple of weeks. I haven't been paying it the, as much attention as it should. And it's been fairly mild this autumn. Unbelievable some of the temperatures. I'm filming this today in the middle of November and I'm in short sleeves. We're going to get a tape measure and see what length it is. About 60 mils there, which is quite long. Quite long, considering I usually cut this during the summer, about 15 to 20 mils, so it's up to 60 mils. So we're going to have fun and games getting this back down again in the spring, but we'll leave that for another video. Let's go and get the mower out and get this long cut. Welcome back. So today we're going to be focusing on the small things that can make a big difference to your lawn. Areas that get the most wear on your lawn are the walk-on on off areas and that's what we're going to focus on today. We're not going to bother doing the entire lawn, we're just going to do the worst areas. For some of this I'm going to be using the hollow tine aerator but I'm also going to be using the garden fork just to show you that you don't need any fancy tools. Now there's a process called verde draining that they do in golf courses and sports grounds where they get a big long tine and, and it's, it goes really deep down into the soil and what it does, it goes into the bottom and it heaves and it creates a fissure in the ground, it heaves and then it comes out and it's a process that professional groundsmen do. We can mimic the exact same thing with our garden forks. So if somebody tells you that forking your lawn is no use, just think about the verde draining and that process. Some people tell you that whenever you push this fork down in, it, it compacts the hole that it goes into. But whenever you get down to the bottom, if you put the heave on it, and then you pull it out, you're gonna create those fissures in the ground. So let's do that now. Put it in, give it a wiggle. Now you can see that ground is lifting up because I do this on a regular basis. Lifting it up, it's not going to make your lawn uneven because whenever you're walking over this constantly, it's going to flatten it back down. If you're enjoying this video, folks, don't forget, leave me a comment down below because it really helps me out and helps me grow my channel. So if you have any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget, smash that like button. Let's go and do the bag. So we'll have the front of the house done. I'm just around the back of the house. We're going to have a look at some different areas and see where it might be worn. You can see the washing line here. This is where we're going to get the most wear and tear. We'll walk in and round the garden. So instead of aerating the whole garden and making lots of work for ourselves, we're going to aerate in and around the garden and then the area where we'd walk on and off the lawn. But just to have a quick walk through the orchard here now, we don't take this lawn too seriously because it's just more for a nice place for the vegetable patches and the trees. Now, whenever we originally installed this lawn, 30 odd years ago, it was just a bog, but there was a lot of rocks. If I take it up here, there's loads and loads of rocks underneath there. So I'm gonna see if I can fork it. If I can't fork it, then I might get the aerator out and have a go with that. I have a question for you. If you think I'm doing this wrong, let me know in the comments below. I'm aerating and then I'm walking over the areas that I've done. Am I doing it wrong? Let me know.
So the downside to corn is you have to get the cores off the lawn. I'm not a great believer. I know there's some people say you should leave the cores lying on the lawn. These cores aren't too bad because the soil's the soil's pretty good. The soil's pretty good here. We've got there's no clay in this ground. This is nice rich soil. But now I'm gonna have to get the, the cores off the lawn, but I have a trick for you. The rake's not bad at tidying it up, but I have another better way to show you. Let's do that now. I'm just going to say it's one of the first times I've used this paddle and having a load of fun with it. 